these are my disclosures. I would like to thank the conference organizers for the opportunity to talk about Gilead's new HIV prevention drug development program. We're calling this program Prevention with Purpose, and the program is comprised of two large pivotal trials, Purpose One and Purpose Two. This program is built on the roots or foundation, if you will, from our lenacapavir for treatment program and we have a robust PK and safety database in persons with and without HIV. Moreover, for the, non, um, for the prevention indication, we also have proof of concept. The capsid inhibitors prevent HIV in non-human primates. Our program has been done with robust community and stakeholder collaboration, engagement of our investigators, the site staff, local community advisory boards at the sites, and with full collaboration and transparency. And I'm really excited to share our program with you today. So lenacapavir has been in development for a really long time. Our first capsid was developed in 2000. Um, the first program to develop uh, something to target the HIV capsid started in 2006 with the first generation lead uh, emerging in 2008. Uh, that one didn't work out like often happens in drug development, and we had to screen over 4,000 new molecules to get to our second generation lead, which eventually, after six years, became the clinical candidate for the long-acting formulation and was put into first-in-human studies in 2018. Lenacapavir is a capsid inhibitor. Um, you can see here in the green conical shell it is the capsid of HIV protein. And within it is contained the viral genome and replicative enzymes. And lenacapavir targets multiple different stages of the HIV replication cycle. For example, upon entry into the cytoplasm of an infected cell, the viral capsid supports the initiation of reverse transcription of RNA um, and after it's disassembled, incorporation of the viral DNA, integration and development of the capsid uh, proteins, which are then um, uh, assembled and emerge into a fully functional viral particle. Lenacapavir with a very high picomolar EC50, uh, very effective picomolar, uh, with low, ver very low concentrations, um, inhibits at each one of these steps. So it inhibits nuclear transport, it inhibits viral assembly and release, and capsid assembly. So it functions in multiple different stages of the HIV replication cycle, and of course is a first-in-class novel HIV medication. LEN is a long-acting drug. It can be uh, administered every 26 weeks. It stays above the target range of the IC6 uh, inhibitory quotient six for 26 weeks and stays above IQ4 out to 32 weeks. So there's a two week grace period where it stays above uh, IQ6. So this is what allows us to give lenacapavir every six months in our treatment and prevention programs. When lenacapavir is administered, it's administered with a PK load. And this is distinct from an oral lead-in. An oral lead-in is done in early development programs to evaluate the safety and tolerability of a long-acting medication before the long-acting medication is administered. In our situation, what we do is provide a PK load. So two tablets of uh, lenacapavir orally on day one and day two, along with the injection on day one, gets us above the IQ4 within a, about a day or two. So here is a modeling demonstration which supports using this PK loading strategy to make sure within a day or two, we're at the right levels of lenacapavir for viral efficacy and presumably prevention efficacy and this can be the way we dose for a PK load. So the lenacapavir formulation that is being evaluated in our HIV prevention studies is administered this way, where we have the 926 milligram 
uh, subcutaneous injection administered on day one with two pills of oral uh, lenacapavir, and then the person goes home with two pills to take the next day. Len is extremely potent with a very um, strong antiretroviral activity. This is a phase 1B study in people with HIV, and you can see the viral load drops are around greater than two log um, after 10 days of monotherapy. So it's a very potent, efficacious drug at lowering viral load in monotherapy. So now I'm gonna tell you about the other tr trials in HIV treatment that provide significant safety um, and efficacy data that supports us initiating our LEN purpose HIV prevention trials. Capella is a phase two, three study designed to evaluate lenacapavir for HIV treatment in people living with HIV who are heavily ARV experienced and have multi-drug HIV. Participants had to be 12 years or older, weigh greater than 35 kilograms, have a viral load that was detectable at greater than 400 copies of ML and have resistance to more than two RV, ARVs of three of the four main ARV classes and have less than two fully active ARV options remaining. So these were people with significantly serious HIV, highly treatment experience with multi-drug resistance. So they were randomized to um, two to one to either a 14 day functional monotherapy arm with LEN orally plus their background failing background regimen and then they went into an open label maintenance phase where they got LEN sub Q, Q six months with an optimized background regimen. And the purpose of this 14 day monotherapy was to evaluate the efficacy of LEN in these highly treatment experienced people. Also, there were people who went on to a placebo arm continuing their failing regimen, um, and they were then switched to LEN PO followed by LEN sub Q six months with an optimized background re regimen. So at day 15, 88% of the participants who received LEN had a greater than 0.5 log reduction in viral load compared to 17% of those uh, patients who received placebo. And this was strongly statistically significant. And this was the study's primary endpoint. Participants in both arms were then transitioned to sub-Q LEN along with this optimized background regimen. And at week 26, the majority of participants had a viral load of less than 50, and most saw very significant improvements in their CD4 count. So this was the Capella trial. Uh, and here's the safety in the Capella trial, which is very important for understanding potential safety in our purpose prep program. LEN was overall very well tolerated. The most common ease were injection site reactions, as noted in the figure, and these were early and then resolved. Uh, persistent sub-Q uh, nodules were noted in some participants. In addition to the ISR, 7% of people had headache and 8% had nausea and diarrhea. Grade three or four lab abnormalities occurred in which occurred in greater than 5% of participants included a low creatinine clearance or high creatinine. Um, non-fasting or fasting hyperglycemia and glycosuria, but these were transient foundings. Numerically, lower percentages of participants had ISRs after their week 26, 28 injections than after their day 15 injections. Okay, the next study I'm gonna tell you about from the treatment program is the Calibrate study. And this was LEN for HIV treatment in ARV naive people living with HIV. And I'm showing you here the 28 week results for efficacy. This was a phase two study designed to evaluate um, LEN for treatment in people who'd never received antiretroviral therapy before. To be eligible, you had to have an RNA above 200 copies per mil and a CD4 greater than 200 cells and not have a hepatitis B or hep C. Participants were randomized to these four groups. It was an open label randomized trial. The first group um, got lenacapavir along with FTAF during the induction phase, and then in the maintenance phase, switch to TAF alone, 25 mg oral QD with lenacapavir. The second group got LEN 
with FTAF and in the maintenance phase switched to Bictegravir with lenacapavir. The third group stayed on len and FTAF throughout, and the fourth group or control arm were on BFTAF with um, a daily BFTAF. And you can see um, on the left-hand side by FDA snapshot, the majority of participants had viral loads less than 50 copies, and the time it took to achieve the viral load less than 50 by missing equals failure analysis was rapid and similar in all groups. So HIV um, treatment naive folks were well treated um, with lenacapavir in combination with other antiretrovirals for initiation of treatment. Here are the safety results from this study. Injection site reactions were common, but most were mild and resolved quickly. While persistent nodules were noted in some participants, these gradually improved over time. And among the non-ISR AEs, nausea and diarrhea were observed most commonly. Okay, so in summary, over 800 participants, and that's a growing number because we have ongoing trials, have received lenacapavir, including oral IV and subcutaneous formulations. ISRs have been most common AEs for subcutaneous formulations, and most have been grade one or two with in duration erythema, pain, bruising, and nodule formulation being reported. We've also seen transient GI AEs with oral and injection formulations, including nausea and diarrhea. Uh, there have been no serious lab abnormalities um, in a pattern. They've been uncommon without a clinical pattern to suggest any toxicities or unanticipated adverse drug reactions. And there have been no reports of acute hypersensitivity reactions. Okay, so I've summarized the treatment data that provides us efficacy and safety information for lenacapavir in treatment. Now I'm switching to the non-human primate studies that we did to establish proof of concept for lenacapavir uh, for prevention of HIV um, uh, and, and, and SIV in non-human primates. So in this um, set of trials that I will present to you, instead of using lenacapavir, we used a lenacapavir analog, which is highly similar in structure to lenacapavir. It's a multi-stage cap. Both of these uh, have the same capsid specific mechanism of action that I explained earlier in the presentation. They're both highly metabolically stable with low clearance and low solubility. Um, the agent um, GSCA1 is very similar to LEN and has the same potent antiviral activity in both HIV and SIV, and that's why it was chosen for proof of concept in the non-human primate studies. And you can see uh, the EC50s on the right for HIV and for SHIV. Okay, so this is the, um, the CAPSID study that proved um, efficacy for prevention in a rectal repeat dose challenge model. So we had 24 rhesus macaques and they were split into groups of eight, placebo with a lower dose of capsid, single injection, and a higher dose of capsid, uh, 150 and 300 mg per keg. And those are in light purple and dark purple. And you can see that after the single subcutaneous dose, uh, the primates received um, repeated low dose intrarectal challenges. And then there was a drug washout period. The animals were challenged up to 15 times with an escalating titer of the SHIV virus. The infection rate was monitored through week 24 and was, was used to compute the infection risk reduction. The graph summarizes the rate of infection across study groups by plotting the percent of, of animals remaining aviremic at any given time. The placebo control is plotted in gray, and then you have the light purple for the lower dose and the darker blue for the higher dose. You can see that there was 86 and 96% per exposure risk reduction respectively with the low dose and the high dose. These infections only happened after the washout period shown by this red dotted line. And after the concentrations of drug had fallen way below IQ of one. Okay. 
This is the, comp, uh, the partner study, if you will, in a vaginal challenge model. It happened very similarly with eight animals each in placebo, 150 and 300 mix per keg. Um, and you can see here, after the weekly vaginal challenges, uh, no animals were infected in the higher group, uh, higher dose group, and only two animals were infected in the lower dose group, again, um, soon after the washout period. And um, this shows uh, proof of concept, these two studies taken together, the caps and molecules, molecules are effective as PrEP in um, the non-human primate models in both rectal and vaginal challenge models. So that brings me to telling you about our complete HIV prevention drug development program and purpose one and purpose two, which rests on all the data that I shared with you. So um, these trials have been conducted with several unique aspects that I don't have uh, the time to go into here, but they involve novel counterfactual designs. We did robust community and stakeholder engagement, which informed the study design and the participant-centered uh, aspects of the trials. In this study of cisgender adolescent girls and women, we're intentionally including pregnant and lactating folks. Um, we're including adolescents in both trials. And we have really changed who we work with and how we work to increase uh, the proportion of folks who are disproportionately underrepresented historically in HIV prevention trials by setting key performance indicators with age, race, and gender goals. So this is purpose one. You can see what the acronym starts for here. This is our trial that takes place in South Africa and Uganda with 5,010 cisgender women. The initial piece of the trial is a cross-sectional HIV incidence cohort where people will be screened for HIV. And if they're positive, they'll have a recency assay conducted to find out if they have recent infection. And we'll use that information to develop the background counterfactual rate. And this trial has two primary endpoints where we're very evaluating both the efficacy of lenacapavir as well as mtricetabine combined with tenofibrir alafenamide or FTAF, also known as Discovi for efficacy in adolescent girls and young women age 16 and to 25. Um, here are the study objectives and endpoints. The objective of the incidence cohort is to estimate the background incidence in the screen population. And then we'll be looking at the primary endpoints of efficacy for PrEP, as well as comparing um, the efficacy in both arms and safety and tolerability of all three products. The study will take place in South Africa and Uganda in the sites shown here. And um, we have um, developed these programs very closely with community enga uh, engagement with key stakeholders and focusing on following the uh, guidelines shown here. Um, here we have a slide detailing a repeated and um, committed community engagement that started in December of 2019. And we impaneled specific GCAGs, Global Community Advisory and Accountability Groups for both of these studies. And I'll show you some of the feedback that we got from these early groups. And you can see how that affected and informed our study protocol and designs. So the purpose um, GCAGs over a period of time and the community stakeholders really emphasize the importance of having PK data in pregnant women in breast milk and infants, as well as understanding drug-drug interactions with lenacapavir and long-acting contraceptives. They also asked us to provide contraception, vaccines and STI treatments and assess intimate partner violence and social harms. And all of that is included in our study. Similarly, we're including pregnant women and adolescents per the guidance and position paper shown here. We also had similar consultations for the Purpose 2 trial, um, and our community advisory groups in this situation told us about the importance of um, choosing our sites, understanding drug-drug interactions, making sure our sites and PIs were representative of the participant population and setting key demographic goals. Here's the Purpose 2 acronym. This study is taking place in US, Peru, Brazil, and South Africa. 
And here's the study design. Here we're evaluating when compared to the background incidents and participants are randomized two to one. In this study, we really focused on fostering diversity and inclusivity. And the, these following slides were presented at ID, last, uh, ID week last week by Michelle Cespedes. So you can look at her poster for more reference. And just wanted to share with you the efforts we're making to increase um, diversity, equity, and inclusion in our trials. So we've changed where we're doing the US sites um, to mirror where new infections are occurring in the US and in other countries. And we've set these specific recruitment goals to ensure diversity and inclusion, 50% Black MSM, 20% Latinx MSM in the US, and 20% transgender women uh, study-wide. And we're doing it using site-specific recruitment plans. So in summary, despite the tremendous progress that's been made in HIV tr treatment and prevention, there's a significant unmet clinical need for those who are not yet benefiting from current daily oral fixed dose combinations, particularly in prevention. And long acting options like lenapapavir could potentially provide a significant advance for people who may benefit from PrEP. The PURPOSE program is committed to harnessing this novel counterfactual design and a person-centered approach to expeditiously demonstrate the safety and efficacy of LEN for PrEP and we're using novel and intentional approaches to carefully choose whom, with whom, where, and how we work to increase the diversity, equity, and inclusion in our entire program. So thank you very much for this opportunity to share this with you.